privilege to stand behind this sacred desk on this day to share a word from the Lord. Amen. I want to thank Pastor King Harris for this awesome opportunity, for Pastor Mike for getting at me month after month, and now I'm finally here, and I count it all joy. Praise God. And a privilege. Hallelujah. scriptures that are listed in your bulletin, Matthew uh, 28, 18, and 19, talks about, go ye therefore and make disciples, because that's the great commandment, what God has called us to do. And then Acts 1, 8 talks about when we avail ourselves to the Holy Spirit, then we shall be witnesses for the Lord and continuing to build God's kingdom. But I want to challenge you today, my young people, I want to challenge you today, what happens before we get to that? How do we get to that space where we are honoring God and we are able to share our story and share our testimony and to become witnesses before, before our brothers and our sisters and true testimonies for the work of the Lord? So I would ask that you turn with me to a focal scripture, Revelation 12 and 11. And it's a simple scripture. We may have heard it time and time again. I will be reading from the New Revised Standard Version, and it says, But they have conquered him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony, for they did not cling to life even in the face of death. The key, the key verse, they, over, they have overcome by the word of their testimony. How many of you agree that we have a lot to overcome this day and age? My, my, my. Even young people, this ain't just for grown folk. The things you have to deal with in school and in life and at home and in your communities, we have a lot to overcome. All right. So, as we begin this journey, I want us to focus on the theme, now run and tell that. All right, run and tell that. Now run and tell that. Yes, ma'am. Let us pray. God, we are grateful for this moment. We thank you. We are grateful for your presence in this place. We thank you for those who are assembled here today. Now, God, just have your way. Allow your word to go forth because it's your word that saves. It's your word that delivers. It's your word that transforms. It's your word that strengthens. It's your word that protects. So without you, God, we're just making a whole lot of noise and wasting our time. But with you, God, we can move mountains. We can do all things through you who strengthens us. So right now, we claim it in the name of Jesus and count it all joy that your word will go forth so that we may leave here differently than when we came in. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 So first, let's begin this journey with defining our faith. Defining our faith. Now, this journey that we're about to travel might be tough. It might be arduous and challenging, yet victorious, rewarding, and game-changing all at the same time. This journey begins with defining our faith. But Hebrews 11 and 1 says, Faith is the substance of things hoped for yes. and the evidence of things not seen. All right. How can one share faith if one doesn't have faith to begin with? Come on. Come on. How can one have faith if one doesn't know what faith is? Is. All right, all right. 
Especially when the word in Hebrews 11 and 1 states that the faith is the beginning of what we hope for and an indication of what we cannot see. Yes. So on the first leg of this journey, it, it's important that you understand what faith is. Yes, ma'am. What it looks like, yes. what it tastes like, what it smells like, what it sounds like, yes. what it feels like. All right. Faith, faith, faith is the result of our spiritual relationship with God. Yes, ma'am. A relationship. Yeah. In this relationship, we truly believe that God is bigger than our circumstances, that God can make a way out of no way. Come on. God can move a mountain or give one the strength to climb. Faith is about seeing God right in the midst of our circumstance, good, bad, or indifferent. All right. Faith is what's needed in this relationship with God to move us from one space to another, to achieve what we dream, and to dream what we believe we can achieve. Come on. Faith is the evidence of things not seen, for faith says no matter the circumstance, the outcome will be good. Say it again. Huh. Romans 8, 28 says all things, all right. Oh. Work together for good for those who love the Lord and are called according to God's purpose. Yes, ma'am. And because the mere fact that you're sitting here right now, you are appointed and you are here for a purpose. Yes. Come on. So that means all things are working for good in your favor. Faith is belief and knowing that I can do all things through Christ yes. who strengthens yes. me. Yes. Faith is taking the invisible and making it visible. Yes, yes, Faith is taking something intangible and making it tangible. That's right. Faith will make our dreams come true. Faith will turn a tragedy into a triumph. Faith will turn yes. pain into promise and purpose. Yes. Faith will turn hurt into healing. Faith yes. is that thing hoped for. Uh -huh. um, that thing that is coming into fruition right now through our acts of faith. All right. On this next leg of the journey, I need you to understand that although faith is a noun, it describes this thing, this substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. But please understand, my brothers and my sisters, that although it is a thing that you possess, it requires some action on our part. All right. Which is why I appreciate the theme sharing our faith. Because what good is our faith if we don't share it? All right. What good is our life that if we don't let it shine? The young people just taught that yes. earlier this morning. Amen. Yes, ma'am. Hallelujah. What good is it if we keep it to ourselves? What good is it if we only share it amongst ourselves and it's sacred and benefits and don't take it outside? of the four walls. Yeah. Faith is the thing that fuels our actions. If one doesn't have faith, one's decisions might be a little ungodly. All right. A little self-centered, that me, 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 me. It might be a little selfish or worldly. If one doesn't have faith, how can one truly believe that this mess will transform into a miracle? If one won't put faith into action, how will one grow to understand that this battle is not mine, but it's the Lord's? James 2.17 says, faith without works or good deeds or action is dead. Yes, ma'am. Faith partnered with relationship and action gives us fuel, gives us ammunition, gives us armor, gives us strength to battle in this war. How many of you believe that there's a war going on? Amen. Our focal scripture came from Revelation 12, and I need you at your time, in your time, to read the entire chapter. Because it's very interesting that this chapter in Revelation is talking about this war that's going on. Yeah. This war between good and evil. Right. And, 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 and this book is not necessarily uh, telling an actual story per se, but it's using images to help paint the picture of this war between good and evil. Now in Romans 12, good prevails. Good outweighs the evil. But I want to paint a little picture for you right now because in this chapter, 
Although this is imagery, we can easily apply that to our lives today. All right. Trayvon Martin and Jordan Davis's blood is still crying from the ground because of injustice. All right. More of our young black men are in jail instead of college. 64% of our young women ages 25 to 44 are the new cases of HIV and AIDS. We're only 13% of the population in the United States, yes, yet we are 50% of the entire HIV and AIDS cases. There's a war going on, beloved. There is a war going on, beloved. The world that the devil rules is out to seek, kill, and destroy our people of color. Our people of color who are living in substandard conditions, who have to deal with substandard educational practices, who have to deal with crime rates that are off the hook. We are dealing with a war out there that is unbelievable, but I stopped by to tell you that we, are served, we serve a God that is bigger than any of our problems. We serve a God that's bigger than our circumstances. We serve a God that gives us strength to do all things through Christ who strengthens us. We serve a God that can combat the jail sentences. We serve a God that can turn this thing around and turn this mess into a miracle. We serve a God that will be our mother, our father, our sister, our brother, our cousin, our friend. We serve a God. Oh. Oh. That can do all things yes, all but fail. All right. So as we continue on this journey, uh -huh. it's so important that people like Pastor King Harris or Reverend Dr. Timothy Tyler or some of you who I may not know your name, but the Lord knows your name, that you continue to lead and fight against these principalities of the world. That you continue to believe in your heart of hearts that good will outweigh the bad. That good will conquer evil yeah. despite your situation, despite how disparaging it may seem when we focus our faith on things eternal. <sighs> we will be delivered through our circumstance. No matter the age, no matter the color, no matter the circumstance, we serve a God who serves a God of all people who sits high and looks low. To every single person in here under the sound of my voice. So having that faith is one thing. It's challenging enough, beloved. Hebrews 111 is not easy to comprehend when you talk about believing in something that you can't see. Believing in something that you can't touch, can't feel, can't smell. But it is your faith that brings it to reality. All right. For the word is just the word until the presence of the Lord manifested in your life so that you can go forward and live out this thing called faith. Yes. It's important that we continue to allow our leaders to rise up, rise up and to defeat the dragon. When you read Revelation 12, you'll see that the good, Michael and his angels, are, just, are battling the dra dragon, the seven-head dragon, yes. which is the visual for evil. Yes. And that seven-head dragon might be racism, All right. sexism, yes. marginalization, Come on. mass incarceration, Come on. racial profiling. Yes, yes. That seven-head dragon can be any of the ills of the world that you see, and the word is reminding us that we overcome uh -huh. Through the blood of the Lamb ah, yeah. and through the stories of our testimony. Oh. Hallelujah. So in sharing our faith on this next leg of the journey, we've right. now talked about what is required of us as disciples of God. To make go out, go ye therefore and make disciples. We've also talked about believing in the Holy Spirit that gives us the strength and gives us the comfort and the courage to go out there and battle the ills of the world. We talked about what faith is. The substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Now let's talk about sharing our faith. Sharing our faith might come a little easy up in here because we're pretty much all like-minded folk. We're here to praise Jesus. We're here to learn God's word. It's a safe space. The presence of the Lord is here. Uh -huh. What happens when you're at school? Oh, all right now. Watch out. Bring it home. What happens, matter of fact, we don't even have to wait till you get to school. What happens when you walk out of these doors and walk up the street to your home? Uh, what happens in your home? So it's so important, young people, to carry this faith that the world didn't give and the 
world cannot take it away. All right. It's so important for you to then to share that faith. Sharing our faith is bearing witness mm -hmm. to the goodness of Jesus yeah. and all he has done for us. Right. Bearing witness is called a testimony. Yeah. Young people, you have a testimony too. Don't just leave yeah. it to us old folks yeah. to tell our story. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. You have a testimony as well. The mere fact that you yeah. woke up this morning is a testimony a to the goodness of Jesus. The, the mere fact that you're on this side of the prison bars is a mere, mere a testimony, testimony of the goodness of Jesus. Yeah. The mere fact that you have an opportunity to receive God's love and salvation is a testimony. Bearing yeah. witness is called a testimony. Uh, God's word says that we're overcome by the word of our testimony. In the book that you are using, Eight Life Enriching Practices of United Methodists, chapter 10 focuses on this thing called sharing our faith. Yes, In yes. this chapter, a woman by the name of Rebecca Manley Piper says that what keeps us from evangelism, which is sharing our story, sharing the good news of Christ, is not ignorance or fear. It, it's not ignorance but fear. Mm -hmm. What stops us from sharing our faith That's right. is not ignorance but fear. We fear that our friends will reject us because uh -huh. it's not cool to preach Jesus in uh -huh. the middle of the lunch hour in the lunchroom in school. Right. We fear that what we don't know might be exposed because when we try to explain an intangible God in a tangible manner, we might sound a little crazy right. because we're talking about this omnipotent God, this omniscient God, this all-knowing God that, that some don't even understand or know. Yes, yes. We may fear that we might be exposed to this lack of knowledge. We fear that our beliefs will be challenged because someone's going to rise up and say, I don't believe in your God. I don't believe in what you're saying. And they may challenge you a bit, and that can be a bit scary. Yeah. If we truly believe, though, that we can overcome, overcome to get through, to defeat, to claim victory, to overcome through our testimony, a.k.a. sharing our stories, we must turn fear into faith. Come on. The next point in this chapter focuses on sharing our faith, realizing that sharing our faith is about relationship. Okay. It's about knowing who we are yeah. and sharing all that God has done and is doing and will continue to do in our lives. All right. It is in our sharing we will overcome and encourage others to do the same. Yeah. For as the skit depicted, it's not all about us. It's right. not me, 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 I, I, I. It's about us collectively as sisters and brothers in Christ sharing the good news of Jesus and all that he has done for me. Sharing our faith, though, is no easy task. It requires knowing self. It requires battling the status quo when the world tells you that you're not going to make it. When the world tells you that at third grade I can decide how many young men are going to go to prison. It's not an easy task sharing your faith when you leave this space and you go into the world. It's not an easy task to understand yourself in this world that is continuous, continuously trying to push you down and tell you that you can't do it and that you're never going to make it. And if you don't have this, you don't stand a chance. You got to know yourself. Sharing your faith is no easy task, but one must have the courage to tell the good and the not so good. That's it was so difficult as a preacher to stand before you and to be transparent and tell you all the things that I have been through because some things were shameful, some things were hurtful, some things were challenging, some things I witnessed I wouldn't want anyone in their lifetime to experience. Amen. Growing up in Harlem and Wagner Projects, Growing up where there was drugs and gangs and well, urine in the elevator and, and, and I'm riding up the elevator and somebody else is riding down and got murdered. My God. Sharing our faith is about sharing the, 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 the tough stories as well. Because in those stories, there is a goodness that you can only realize by seeking God in the midst of all your situations and circumstances. So sharing your faith is, has to have a courage to share the good and the not so good. Sharing your faith 
It's also about humbling yourself to exalt God. That's right. Again, the young people, me, 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 I, 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 it's not about us. That's right. It's about exalting God. Huh. You must have the wherewithal to realize that we don't have to conform to a world that counts us out every day, a world that says we'll be dead or in jail, uneducated, drug addicts, a world that says that we are not good enough. Well, Sharing our faith requires the strength to face opposition even when no one agrees with you. Sharing our faith, as risky as it is, can create a space of healing, self-esteem, and forward movement. The world will tell you YOLO or do you, you gotta get yours, I gotta get mine, but if you truly believe that the God in me is greater than those who are in the world, I must stand on the goodness of Jesus and all that he has done for us. And if my life hasn't been all that it could, I might be going through, you might be going through something right now, well, right at this very moment. But I have an opportunity to look at verse 11, which is our focal scripture, which says that we overcome by the blood of the Lamb and through our testimony. Yes. I must believe that I have the power to change my current circumstance. Yes. I must believe I have the power to shift the atmosphere and situations. Yes. I must believe that through my relationship with Christ and my story, my young brothers will stop being killed. I have to believe that through my testimony that incarceration yes. will yes. decrease. I must, I must believe, I must have the faith, I must tell my story that, so that I will be afforded a good education, decent living conditions, decreased unemployment. Sharing our faith not only helps others, but it strengthens, it teaches, it empowers, it encourages us to press on, to move forward, to do better, to change the game and shift the atmosphere. Your faith will not co-sign with the status quo. Right. Your faith will not allow you to be mediocre. Because if you truly believe that you're a child of the, the most high God, then we don't accept mediocre. That's right. We, we accept greatness. Yeah. For we can do all things through Christ all who strengthens things. us. So in closing, through sharing our stories, I must believe that my hope is built on nothing less yeah. than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but I wholly lean on Jesus' name. On Christ, oh, the solid rock I stand. All on the ground is sinking sand. It is through our sharing of our story that we shall overcome. That we shall overcome the ills of the world that is ruled by the devil. And the devil comes in like a thief in the night to seek, kill, and destroy. But I need you to run and tell that. Run and tell someone that we shall overcome for the name, at the name of Jesus. At the name of Jesus. Every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. I need you to run and tell that. We shall overcome, for we are more than conquerors. We are the head and not the tail. We are created in the image and likeness of God. We are children of God who can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. Now I need you to run and go tell that. We shall overcome for life and death is in the power of the tongue. And I have the power to speak life into my dead situation right now. So I need you to run and go and tell that. We shall overcome for God's word says in this life. You will have trouble, but take heart. I have overcome the world, and because the Lord has overcome the world, and I am called to be hearers and doers of the word, I need you to stand firm and say that I can overcome, and I need you to run and tell that. We shall overcome, for I know a man who was born of a virgin, healed the sick, raised the dead, fed 5,000 plus, Made the blind to see, uh -huh. made the lame to walk, yeah. loved the loveless, yeah. forgave the unforgivable, uh -huh. suffering and was bruised and was beaten and was bruised high, and stretched wide, and pierced in his side, he hung his head, and he died. He was buried in a borrowed tomb, but on the third day, on the third day, on the third day, he rose the